And in the ever-evolving world of telepathy, yes, telepathy, it looks like at least one more person will soon be able to control a computer just by thinking about it, because a Wall Street Journal is reporting that the FDA is now giving Neuralink the go-ahead to implant a second patient this summer, despite some issues reported with the first one earlier this year. And this time, they're planning on embedding the quarter-sized chip a little bit deeper into that human brain to prevent it from retracting, which is what happened to Nolan Arbaugh, who a month after his surgery in January started noticing some issues with the signals that allowed him to control a mouse cursor using just his brain. But our boss says Neuralink was able to fix the issue without doing surgery. There was no reason to put um, me through another brain surgery if they could recover any sort of performance, which right. they were absolutely able to do. They worked around that and they found a way to make it um, better again. And now it's better than what it was before the threat retraction. Uh, which is the software update, wild stuff. NBC News medical fellow, Dr. Akshay Sayal joins us now. Dr. Sayal, so Neuralink is saying that they're gonna embed those tiny wires deeper into the brain. I, I mean, that is such a complex surgery. How does that work? It is, Gaudi, and I think the, the best way to sort of understand this is, is if we could pull that image of the device up again, and, and really to simplify it here, Gaudi, the, the device has a quarter-sized computer um, that's really extended by about 64 threads here. You can see there, each one's actually the, you know, smaller than a human hair. I mean, you know, the, the, the quarter-sized computer that you see lies on closer to the skull, and those threads or those little projections go into the brain. And what they said, Gotti, with the first patient, with Mr. Nolan Arbaugh, you heard there, is that the brain shifted a little bit, and some of those threads got displaced. I think only about 15 percent of the threads that he had initially in the right place are actually in the right place now. So what, you know, the, we're going ahead and we're hearing that uh, Neuralink is about to uh, try this in another patient, and one of the changes they're making in tandem with the FDA is actually putting those threads a little bit deeper. Uh, so less likely for them to get dislodged or displaced in the brain, Gotti. That is wild. 15% and they're still able to push software updates that make it work. They basically fix, uh, fix these issues uh, through this system upgrade. But, but how do you upgrade, I don't know, the software that's interfacing with the brain? Yeah, I, I think the best way to think of it is kind of like a like a smartphone, where you have where you have the hardware or the iPhone and the software or iOS that runs on it. Um, if there's a problem in, in in something going on, you can kind of troubleshoot. See, is it a hardware problem? Is it a software problem? And it, sometimes you can fix one and make up for deficiencies in the other. And Gaudi, that's essentially what they did. So what they found was that a lot of those threads weren't in the right place. So they tweaked the algorithm a little bit. I think the way it's being described is it made it a little bit more sensitive uh, to to, hmm. to activity of the cells in the brain. And by fixing it on the software side, they were able to make up for that deficiency on the hardware side. And you can see that uh, he's able to demonstrate movement again, just like he was uh, back when the chip was first implanted. That's fascinating. And, and Neuralink is saying that they've had thousands of quadriplegics sign up for the registry to see if they could possibly be eligible. Uh, less than 100 qualify right now. Uh, why is that? What, what is the qualification for somebody to partake in something like this? Yeah, so they've, they've asked a lot of people to apply and, and build a sort of patient registry database. But, Gadi, whenever we're doing clinical trials, um, we hear about inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria. Essentially, you know, there's certain things that if patients have some of these features, they're not allowed to be in the trial. And just looking at the Neuralink website, some of those things, you know, if they had a pacemaker, for example, put in, or if they have a seizure disorder, if they have conditions where they have to get a lot of MRIs, they wouldn't be able to be a part of this. I mean, that's what I, I think is going on, is that a lot of people are, you know, meet the criteria for being either quadriplegic or paraplegic from, you know, a spinal cord injury, like a diving accident, or ALS, a motor neuron disease. Uh, but because of some other uh, things that they may have as well, they aren't able to be a part of this, of this innovative trial. And I know that Neuralink is hoping to implant 10 people by the end of this year. Do you think that that's possible? Does that seem realistic? It does. Uh, you know, the, the site that's been announced as, as the, the, with the first patient, uh, Mr. Arbo, is, is Barrow Neurological Institute in Arizona. I actually used to work there uh, back in, in high school and college. They are one oh. of the best in the country, if not the best uh, neurosurgery program. So the fact that they are leading this is, I think, going to make a lot more people feel comfortable about it and a lot more people want to get involved. Um, and you're seeing, you know, Mass General Brigham at, at Harvard Medical School also launching a brain-computer interface program. So I think there's a lot of excitement behind this and a lot of respectable big-name players. So I, I do think it's reasonable, and I'm excited for what's ahead, Gotti. Yeah, very exciting. Did you say you worked there at, in high school? Yeah, in my, in my former life, I wanted to be a brain surgeon, so. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You, while you were there, I was working at Tasty Freeze. You and I are not the same. <laughs> Dr. Sayal, thanks so much. Anytime.
Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.